WRMU. Oh, I'm going to take the hat off to put the... And hello, Raider Nation. Everyone else joining in on, you know, wherever you're at. Radio, YouTube. This is Baller's Paradise. I'm your host, Alex Arbogast, along with a very esteemed colleague of mine, coming a very big regular here on the show. Introduce yourself, my friend. Um, my name is Matt Gilbert. Um, you probably have heard me if you've ever tuned into Country Roads before, um, every Wednesday night at 9. But, as always, I'm happy to be here with my friend Alex Arbogast and talk a little bit about NBA, and we have the playoffs in store for night. Oh, for yeah, tonight, definitely. Sure. It's a playoff show tonight. Um, you know, you know. Got a great show, you great show for you guys tonight. We're gonna get into the uh, great things to come tonight because we got a long show tonight. We gotta get gotta get everything going well because we got a lot talked about. Like Mike, uh, like like Max said, playoff playoffs uh, are going on. Don't don't really want to miss this uh, second half of the show. We got a special guest coming on, a uh, race fan Geo, aka Geo, uh, local local legend here in Alliance. Uh, he's been on the uh, show with us. Uh, well, the sports guys here, every once in a while he was on last year whenever I was doing uh, Raiders Out with Noah Hiles and Chris Golian and all the other guys that are on the sports team. So, you know, and he was a great guy. He's a great guy, and we're very excited to have him on the show tonight. So, let's get into it. We're going to go with the game of the night. That's how we start things off always. And, you know, I get to make up the rules since this is my show. And since there's only two nights left in the NBA regular season, and um, there's a huge... Uh, complication for the eighth seed in the West, and that game is tomorrow. So that's the game of the night. The game of the night is tomorrow, and that is the game of the Minnesota Timberwolves going up against the Denver Nuggets in Minnesota tomorrow night in Minneapolis. And this game is huge because whoever wins this series is in the eighth seed of the Western Conference Finals. Um, you know, the series is tied 1-1 apiece, I believe. So, you know, like I said, whoever wins the game, they got the same record, season series tied. Whoever wins the game is coming out on top in, uh, in not only in the season series, but is the eighth seed in the playoffs. So this is a big, big game. Mac, I think we got to break this one down. Who you got winning this one? Uh, it's huge. This, it's, it's a big is, game. Oh, it's a huge game for sure. It's huge. Um, but we got uh, Denver and Minnesota. I think we have... Um, Minnesota, I think, is going to take it home. I really do. Because let's think about it. Um, Denver does have better defense and and stuff, but I think Minnesota... Um, do they have Jimmy Butler back for this game? Yes, they do. Jimmy Butler played against the Lakers that night. They played against uh, Memphis the other night, and they won that game. So Jimmy Butler is back, which is great. Yeah, because think about it, because they were the third best team when Jimmy Butler was healthy. Then he went down, they went tumbling all the way down to eighth seed. Now they have to fight just one last game to get into the playoffs. I know Denver has better statistics, according to this um, sheet you gave me. Um, they're doing better in um, points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game. Um, let's see... Uh, not steals per game. Um, blocks per game, I think, is... Yeah, Denver's still doing better. So, in most stats, Denver is doing better. However, I think Minnesota with Jimmy Butler will take this victory home because they got... Like I said before, they were the number three seed when Jimmy Butler was healthy. And now they have him back. Yeah. They'll take that one home. And I hope they do because this is their first time going to the playoffs since 2004, I believe. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you got any more before I go on my little spiel here? Or... Um, let's see. Do I have anything more to add? Um, not really. You can go okay. on your little spiel. Well, the thing is, a Butler really adds a huge dynamic to this Timberwolves team. You know, a lot like you brought up, they were third in the West. When Butler was on there, then he gets a torn meniscus, is out for six, eight weeks, and like you said, the team just basically falls apart. Um, I think Minnesota will win this game simply because of the fact that Jimmy Butler, you know, he was there to help this team for a reason. He's a fantastic player, great two-way player. Um, he was able to do a little bit of everything uh, for this team, able to you know score, play defense, uh, all that stuff. He's great with Tibbs, you know, former coach. You know, they used to be. Uh, player and coach uh, in Minnesota before Tibbs was uh, eventually let go. Um, you know, not basically going off statistics, you know, 
And like you said, the statistical value, Denver does win. But Denver really doesn't have that big of a star. You know, I guess you could say Paul Millsap is their star player. But he's been out for a huge chunk of the year. He's only played 30 games this year. So, to me, Minnesota, I think that they got the advantage star power-wise. And uh, I think I think Minnesota's just going to want it more. Even though Denver's won six in a row up to, up to t- uh, tomorrow. But I don't. I I see Minnesota just winning just because of you know Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Jimmy Butler back. and Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think they're going to have an answer for those two and potentially Wiggins as well. And so we're going to get into uh, you know the main, the chunky, uh, juicy part of tonight's show. Uh, I want to put out a disclaimer out for every one of the viewers that all playoff matchups matchups are as of today um, because of all the seeding and stuff. Uh, 15 out of the 16 teams are in the playoffs, but like we just talked about, Minnesota and Denver, that game will be uh, will decide who's the eighth seed in the West tomorrow. So whoever's victorious in that game uh, will be the eighth seed, taking on uh, Houston, who's the first seed. So we're gonna actually start with the West, you know, um, and break it all down and everything. We're gonna do our best to do what is possible. So I'm gonna have, you know, Mac. We're gonna start off with the, um, uh, you know. Uh, one eight seed basically. So who do you got? Who do you got? You know we got Houston and Minnesota. So we both took Minnesota. Houston or Minnesota? You know how many games? You know do you think the series is gonna be good? You know don't don't expand on it too much as we got a lot to talk about. But you know give, give us a little insight, a little a little insight. I think Minnesota might have a chance to pull off one game in the series. I don't think any more. I mean it could possibly be a sweep, but I think Minnesota if. They win in Denver too, because you don't know. But I'm just going to say it's going to be Minnesota, and I think Minnesota will pull off one game. But I don't think they'll win the series. They could possibly get swept by Houston. Houston's that good of a team. They're having a fantastic year, and I believe they will take that series easily. Yeah, I think Houston will win that series too. I'm going to say maybe it goes to a gentleman's sweep of five, five games, maybe even six. Just because you know you got Jimmy Butler, a great perimeter defender. Excuse me, uh, doing very well, being able to guard Harden, but then you know you got Chris Paul on the other end, and you know I guess you could put Wiggins on him too, uh, Chris Paul. So that might work, and then Carl Anthony Towns is probably better than Clint Capel. So you could see a potential, maybe even a, an upset, maybe even. Um. Um. But um. Yeah. This. This series can definitely go either way, but to me, I think Houston's going to win just because you know their offense is fantastic and um, you know they they run that up and down style kind of play with Dan, with D'Antoni's system there. Um, I think it's going to be a great game. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic series. So I got Houston winning in six games. Uh, you know, I'm going to say I'm going to give Minnesota a couple games. Um, Speaking of playoffs, you know, every show we will be talking about each series, you know, who's doing what, where he's going. So it's basically going to be playoffs on the rest of the rest of the way on the show. So um, we're going to get into the second series in the West, and that's Utah versus New Orleans. You know, like I said, all all uh, playoff opponents and series and stuff are not officially cemented because of games and. Uh, everything going on in the next two days. So these are just if they started today. So Utah versus New Orleans. Mac, who'd you have in that series? Uh, that is going to be a tough one for sure. But I think uh, between Utah and New Orleans, I really think Utah will probably take it because they have um that young guy, that Donovan Mitchell. Mm-hmm. He's been amazing all year. And... New Orleans is good, but they're not going to be as good without Boogie Cousins. So, I think Utah has everyone healthy. They'll take that series home. You see, this is a series that's a toss-up to me right now. But I think it will go. It could possibly go to a game six, game seven. I think it's going to go to seven games, honestly, because when you look at when you look at these two teams if they start today. You know, Anthony Davis and Gobert, that's basically, you know, a cancel out. Then you got Donovan Mitchell and Drew Holiday, that's a cancel out. But then you got Mir Titch on one end, then you got Ricky Rubio, you know, going at it and stuff. So there's a lot of equalizers uh, for these two teams combined. Um, so it's really hard to choose from the series because, you know, you got, you know, like you said, Mitchell scoring 28 game. 
Uh, it's your holiday. I'm scoring 18 a game, roughly. You know, doing very well. Did you say um, Mitchell scores 28 a game or 20 a game? 20 a game. But yeah, I thought you said 20. Yeah, I'm like, if he scores uh, 28, he should be rookie of the year. But um, that you know, how everything is going. Anthony Davis put up 28.2 points per game, 11, 11 or so rebounds a game. You know, two, two over two blocks and o- over one steal. If if Anthony Davis doesn't win some sort of award this season, I will be, I will be personally upset because he's working his absolute butt off trying to do everything he can for this Pelicans you know, team, and they they've won the playoff spot. So you've that, said so it that's before, why, and I agree uh, with you on this one. He is the one of the most underrated players in the NBA. He's very underrated. You know, he does not to, give get the credit he truly deserves. I think he is by. He's the power forward right now, center. Well, he plays, you know, about forty percent of his minutes at center. But yes, he is a power forward. Then yeah, I think he's for sure the best power forward in the NBA. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but I think um, the reason I'm going to give it to Utah is just because no Boogie Cousins that's going to hurt the team. Um, I'm going to say New Orleans in seven. I think it's going to come down to a game seven. I think. The experience of Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis being in the playoffs before is going to help him a little bit, along with you know a couple other guys that have been in the playoffs as well. I think the experience is going to help him because this Jazz team really hasn't been in the playoffs except for you know Rudy Gobert and a couple other guys on the team that were from last season. But you know I, I think um, New Orleans star power just favors them a little bit more over uh, Utah there, so I'm going to give it to New Orleans in seven. Um, so this is probably be the best series if they start to, this would easily be the best series. Number two, Golden State going up against number seven, Oklahoma City, where KD, Kevin Durant would have to play, uh, at least two games back to back in Oklahoma City. Who would you give to that? You know, remember playoffs are a whole different story. Remember, remember that regular season doesn't count. So, so, so who, who do you got winning that series? Okay. First off, um, will Steph Curry be back for the first round? No, he will not because he's been ruled out three to six weeks, and that would be after. I still have Golden State um, winning with or without Steph Curry, but um, I think if Steph Curry's out, OKC will get a game or two off of Golden State for sure. You know, I honestly think OKC would take it to seven games easily, but, you know, that's just me. Um, I'll I'll, I'll give them uh, Golden State in six. I'll do that. Okay, well, I'll go Golden State in seven because you know, like, like like I said, like I just told Mac, you know, regular season doesn't matter when it's playoffs. Records are zero zero. You know, first team to sixteen wins it all. First team to win four in a series wins the series. You know, it's just how it goes. But I just want to say something a little sarcastic. I can't remember the last time Carmelo Anthony's made it out of the first round of the playoffs, and I can't even remember the last time he's been in the playoffs. It's been five years since Carmelo Anthony's been in the playoffs. I think he's going to relish this moment and absolutely go bonkers in, in the series. I really think so. I think that Carmelo's going to relish this again. I think he's. I think they're going to go to him more often than what they did in the season because he only averaged 16 points per game. That That's a career low for Carmelo Anthony. And that, a, that, that is the worst points per game of his entire career. And another thing I have to say is um, you have to remember with OKC is it took a while to form that chemistry between their big three with Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo. I think they've kind of figured it out. I mean, yes, they're the seventh seed, but you got to remember the Western Conference is very difficult to play predict, in. Yeah, play in, play in and predict. So I'm going to say Golden State in seven. I know that the stars are going to come out to play. Definitely Russell's going to play. Paul George is going to play. Carmelo's going to play. KD's going to play. Clay's going to play. Draymond's going to play. I'll say this. If Steph Curry were there, I'd say Golden State sweep easily. I wouldn't even say they swept. OKC won the season series 2-1, so they can definitely put up a fight against Golden State. For sure, they can definitely put up a fight, but like I've always said, playoffs you know, are a whole different ball game. So I'll say Golden State in 7 if it started today. So that's what we're going to go with there. Um, ne- the ne- the last uh, series of eight in this Western Conference right now is going to be Portland versus San Antonio. Now this is a little bit interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna let Mac do this one first. The, I, I already know my. This pick. is a very very interesting series as you got um Greg Popovich who 
has had more success than almost any other coach in the NBA with the San Antonio Spurs. I think he could for sure um, take a couple games in the series. However, I think Portland's young youth and energy, and with one of the best point guards in the NBA today, Damian Lillard, are going to take that series home in Game 7. I'm taking that one to Game 7. Okay. Now let me throw this rock at you, Mac. Playing a little bit devil's advocate, I guess, as Chris Golian would say. Um, what if Kawhi Leonard comes back during the series and he's at full strength in everything? Hmm. Does, does that does that change your opinion? Let's see. Because uh, Kawhi's I'd... only played nine games this year. That's it. He's only played nine games. I don't think it will. I think Portland's got the series this year. I really do. Well, here's my. That's th- a tough one. Yeah, it is very tough. Um. If if Kawhi does come back, I give it to San Antonio in seven. If Kawhi doesn't come back, I give it to Portland in six. Because, you know, like you said, they have Damon Lillard and CJ McCollum, one of the best backcourts in the NBA right now, currently standing. Um, San Antonio's been riddled with injuries this entire year. Oh, we were going to say something. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Uh, I was going to say, uh, but never mind. It's not really important. I said that Joseph Nurek seems like he's a pretty good player, too. He's not bad. He's been their defensive anchor for Portland, which is great. Um, but, you know, you got Ald- Aldridge is the only offensive focal point for San Antonio. I wouldn't be surprised if Popovich slips Rudy Gay in there at the small forward just because, you know, he can provide them with that offense, which I don't know why he didn't during the season, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, you know, Pau Gasol, who provides some excellent minutes there at the center position. So, you know, if Kawhi Leonard does come back, it's easily a six game, you know, it's easy. I think to me, it's a seven game series. No question. Uh, comes down to San Antonio winning in seven, but if he doesn't come back, it's Portland in six, you know, the offensive firepower of Damon Lillard and CJ McCollum is just too much. Portland's been doing hasn't been too bad on the on the defensive end this year. You know, third third overall in the league in defense. That's pretty good when last year they were absolutely terrible defensively, like twenty eighth or so in the league. Um it, it's just gonna come down to the X factor, and that's if well, like I've said like multiple times, if Kawhi Leonard comes back. That that's gonna be the X factor of this series. That's gonna be a huge question mark. Does Kawhi Leonard come back? And so far, all signs are pointing toward no. It's honestly like more likely. Yeah, to be I'm, I'm not. Ex- I'm not expecting him to come back. Yeah. After like what we've been talking about, um, recently, he doesn't look like he's coming back. That's why I kind of said what I said too. I mean, I, it, it would be tough, but you gotta remember they haven't played with Kawhi all year, so I think it would mess up their chemistry a little bit. And I just think be prepared for him not to come back, mm-hmm. and Portland to take that series. In seven games, because I think you can never count Greg Popovich out. Yeah, I agree. You know, I'm saying six. Just Same with um, you know, youth and stuff. But well, and then anything else you want to add? Or are you ready to get to the East? Um. Uh, well, we're gonna actually save the East for the second half of our show with Geo. So, so we're gonna continue on and do you know the semis and the conference. Oh, the oh, thing. awesome! I didn't know we were gonna. Yeah, do that. we're gonna do the whole thing we're for gonna, sure. Let's we're do doing, that. We're doing the whole nine yards, Mac. We're doing absolutely. It all. Let's doing do all. it all. Let's do all it all right. right here on WRMU ninety one point one. Definitely. So your series, I can't remember who'd you have. I know you had Houston. I think you had Utah winning those series, and I have Houston and New Orleans. I'm still... I had Houston and Utah, yes. Okay, well, I, who do you have winning that series? I got Houston winning mine. Do you have Houston winning yours, or who you have winning? I I want Utah to win, but I'm going to have to say Houston, just because of they just had an incredible season, and I think when the playoffs come, that's a team that's only going to get better the way they're playing now. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Utah's still a young team. They don't have much experience, so I think Utah might and I said no to this a couple weeks ago, but I think Utah might be able to squeak in a game if they're lucky. Yeah, I would agree. I think they would be able to squeak in a game if they went up against Houston. Uh, me, I think New Orleans pushes it to, to five. Uh, give give, uh, give them a gentleman's sweep, if you will. Um, ho- hopefully, you know, maybe they push it to six, who knows. 
Um, second game, you know, second series there. Uh, I have Golden State and Portland. I think you have Golden State and Portland too, don't you think? Because I, yes, I'm yes, gonna have I Golden do. State winning that one. You know, star power, everything else there. I'm gonna have uh, Golden State winning that one as well. You know, just, just because you know, Draymond Green very well offensively, defensively. And KD, Steph Curry will thing. be back for that series. Yeah, plus Steph will be back as well. Yeah, and that's a great Clay, point. Clay, I still think has one of the most beautiful outside shots in the game. Oh yeah, definitely. He's got a beautiful jump shot. Um, so you know, I you know, I think we're both gonna have Houston coming out of the West there. I think I think you would agree. So we're gonna go uh, into a PSA break, and we'll be right back with hopefully our very esteemed uh, guests. So keep it locked in 91.1 WRMU. Imagine if I told you that an earthquake was going to hit tomorrow right where you live. That it would be 6.5 in magnitude with aftershocks occurring twice 25 minutes apart. You'd no doubt talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you an earthquake will happen tomorrow, but what if it does? Shouldn't you have a plan? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. What are all the things you witness online in a day? Cats playing piano, selfies on your feed, your friend's picture being turned into a nasty meme that's been shared 50 times, 51, 52. When someone's being bullied online, it's hard to know what to do. Now you can speak up with the witness emoji. It looks like an eye in a speech bubble, and it's in the symbol section near the clocks in your phone. You'll let the world know it isn't cool, and you'll let your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn earrings today. Buckle up, Sarah. Michaela's got, like, the best earrings. Sarah, buckle up. I wish my name was Michaela. We're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah, seatbelt. I wonder if there's pizza at school today. It can be tough getting through to kids, but it's your job to make sure they're wearing your seatbelts. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. And hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Raider Radio here on the glorious WRMU studio. Uh, Alex, I guess, back with uh, Matt Gilbert. And we have a very esteemed colleague, uh, Gio. Gio, thanks for joining us. How are you doing tonight, buddy? Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm looking uh, forward to the NBA playoffs. It's always fun. But first of all, i got to say, uh, go Raider Nation. Uh, what a championship we 
dominated in the championship game, and I can't wait to next season because we may have to go on the road to Texas and play in their house next year. But uh, it, it, it was like the Empire Strikes Back, and we got our 13th title. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah, definitely. That series was – that game was fantastic. I was sitting here in the studio the entire time, board up and making sure everything was going well, and my friend and I were just going nuts here in the studio when we we heard we won that championship. So we're very excited for that, and we are very happy to be national champions one, once again. Um, so, Gio, we're going to get your predictions on the West real quick. Because, you know, uh, we already did that. So we're going to get your predictions real quick. Uh, the eighth seed is yeah, yet to... I, huh? Yeah, well, let me, let me just go through. I, I, my, my first round, I got Houston, Golden State, Portland, and Utah advancing. Okay. Uh, at second round, I got the Rockets and Golden State advancing. Okay. And then I've got Golden State winning in six games. Uh, to be the West representative again, uh, I'm looking for Curry to be healthy, and 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 a team is just it's it's the, it's the Golden State Warriors, fellas. Mm, Not definitely. that I don't think the Rockets are good. I think the Rockets are a very good team, but Golden State healthy is the best team in the NBA, and they're going to be tough to beat. Now, oh, yeah. if, they, if there's an injury, I could definitely see uh, Houston upsetting that, but um, I, I don't care who has home court. Golden State's just a it's it's a it's a dynasty, guys. Oh yeah, definitely. And, you know, with all four players, Steph, KD, Clay, and Draymond, you got that up uh, a uh, battle. A uh, Houston team, you know, just just that running gun offense draw it draw drives you out mentally, physically. Um, it does everything in your willpower, sort of to do that. And fantastic, fantastic job there with everyone. Really, everyone's doing a phenomenal job there. So those are Geo's predictions for the West. Uh, we're gonna get into the East right now because you know that's that's the conference Cavs are in, so we're gonna do that. So, uh, Gio, we're actually gonna get your prediction on the first series. If you know, again, playoffs if they started today, uh, Raptors Wizards. Who do you got winning that one out of the Raps and the Wiz? Uh, see, the, the Raptors are a different team in my opinion than the regular season Raptors, and the reason is is their bench is so important and. When they get to the rotation of the second team, they dominate because their second team is better than any second team in the NBA. The problem is when you make it to the playoffs, that rotation is going to be a little different. I, I think Toronto will struggle in the first round, and I, I think it's going to take them six or seven games to get out of that first round. But I do think they get out of the first round uh, of their matchup, yeah, especially if they play the Wizards. You know, a lot of things could change. Uh, especially with that Milwaukee Philadelphia be, uh, game being so important tomorrow. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Matt, got anything to add to that? Um, I actually have to agree with Gio a little bit on this one. I think Toronto will w- come out with the W in the series. However, I think Wizards will give them a good ride because I've said it before. I'll say it again. When Wall and Beal are on top of their game, they're almost impossible to beat. Amen, brother. The dynamic duo, man. They they can go for forty and forty. I, I'm just, I, guys. As a Cavs fan, it really scares me. Uh, it, a, a double duo just like that. Um, but you know, thank goodness the Cavs don't have to. Probably won't have to face Washington in the first round. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Because you know, like, like you just said, Gio, they they can go for forty any night. That team is really good, especially with Scott Brooks being their head coach. Uh, and all the Porter improving third round pick, you know, in 2012 or 2013, whenever he was drafted, you know, uh, we're actually gonna get into the Cavs here uh, after after this after this other round. But uh, I would definitely have Toronto winning the series uh, in seven. You know, like Gio said, probably in seven, just because um, Wall and DeRozan play a little bit better defense than what Wall and Beal do. I know Wall's a pretty good defender, especially with chase down blocks and everything else. But when you're when you're discussing uh, potential and how great these guys can do on and off, you know the court. You know Washington's bench isn't as great as Toronto's, and we gotta make that clear. Uh, Toronto's bench is first in the league in bench production. It has been this whole year, and it's one of the and it's something that they want to improve in the off season, and they did. And, and like Gio mentioned, the ball, the new new system, it looks fantastic. It looks a lot better than what what did last year. Hands down, it definitely looks a lot better. You know, main thing with this is you know if they do run into LeBron, 
and company uh, are are they gonna are they gonna get swept again? That that's the question. You know, I understand. We'll get we'll get to the Cavs here in a little bit, but can can they hurdle LeBron and Kevin Love and company? That 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 that's the real true test to know if the Raptors are legit if they faced uh, Toronto if they face Cleveland in the first round. Will the Raptors be a legit team to go and get it this year? Um, yeah. Anything else to add, Mac? Or um. No, I would just put um, Toronto in six. That's what I would really put. I think Washington will get a game or two, but I think in the end, like I said before, Toronto will come out with the W. Okay, then we're going to get into the... Actually, we're going to get into the Cavs right now, believe it or not. It's the 4-5 matchup. Cleveland versus Indiana. Uh, Gio will let you go first. You don't win that series, Cleveland or Indiana. Um, you know, over spring break, fellas, I get to go up to Philadelphia. I saw my sister, and I saw the first round of the uh, NCAA tournament in Pittsburgh. And on the Tuesday of that week, I got to see Indiana play at Philadelphia in a real nail-biter game. And Indiana came out. Indiana's a quality team. I mean, the Cavs are going to, you know, they're going to struggle at times against the Pacers. I think the Cavs can get out of that matchup. And I, and also, for the record, I want to state this. Tomorrow, Philadelphia plays Milwaukee, okay? I believe Philadelphia is going to win tonight against Atlanta. they got an 11-point lead, and I think Philadelphia beats Milwaukee tomorrow. And I don't think Milwaukee's going to care as much about the game. And the reason is, is if Milwaukee loses the game and Miami wins tomorrow, Milwaukee will slip to the seven seed. And that means that the Milwaukee Bucks will have to play Boston in the first round. They'd much rather play Boston in the first round than Philadelphia. Okay, so let's let's get that out of the way because I know you're going to talk about uh, three six matchups and the two seven, but that's that's an important fact mark. Back to the Cavs Pacers. I, I do think the Cavs finish the series in six games. I think it's going to take six games. And uh, Indiana's a quality team, man. They've got guys who can shoot the ball from the outside. I like their inside outside game. And also, um, they, they they defend well, so it's going to be a, a fun a fun series to watch, and it's going to be much more competitive than Cleveland normally has in the first round. Yeah, I would have, I would agree with that, Joe. Definitely, you know, what, like you said, the two two uh, two seven three six and even one eight matchups haven't even been decided yet. So that's a real nail biter there. You know, like you said, if Milwaukee wants to play Boston, that would be the more favorable matchup. Um, no matter who Miami plays, no matter who plays Miami, they're in for a tough night because you know, we got Eric Spolstra, a great coach there, and you also got um, Hassan Whiteside, also as a fantastic coach, you know, as a fantastic center as well. And I'm going to say this right now: I wouldn't be surprised if Dwayne Wade starts and starts in the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of throwback uh, Father Prime. I think I would love that personally. Uh, so I would have uh, Cleveland winning in five. In my opinion, I think, you know, uh, Cleveland, I think, has a little bit more firepower. The, the experience is definitely going to kick into play when you think about it. Um, it it's honestly just going to come down to um, how how everything goes. and uh, it, It's just going to come down to experience and ju- just how India's going to play, how hard they're going to play and, and stuff. So, for me... I'm giving Cleveland five. Mac, what do you give them? Um, I will give Cleveland six because, like Geo said, um, Indiana is a tough team. But the reason I'm going to say Cleveland in the end is because they still have the king, the one and only, LeBron James. And this is just my opinion. I don't know if you guys all can all agree with this or not, but he is playing the best basketball of his career right now. Amen, brother. Amen. It's unbelievable, man. I mean, here's the thing: the abuse he takes on a nightly basis is unbelievable. Because every time he goes to Iraq, he, he gets fouled. But they don't call it, of course. But the one thing that's been unique about this season in the NBA, which is a very proactive league, they saw an issue last year where the NBA stars weren't playing a lot because of the back-to-back and and just the travel schedule. So what do they do? They made the season two weeks longer, and then they made, they, they made it less back-to-backs, and LeBron James, for the first time in his career, is going to play all 82 games. And the reason I love that as a fan is just think about if you live in Memphis, and uh, for Christmas you bought $400 worth of NBA tickets so your son or daughter could go see LeBron James play. 
you got to see him play this year. And that never happened before because LeBron needed rest. This year he's going to play 82 games. He's, you know, he's the marquee name in the league. And, it, and he is playing phenomenal. Also, he's shooting the three ball at, at an alarming rate. So it, he, he really can beat you inside and outside. But, yeah, I, I just I, I hope we're right. I hope the Cavs get Indiana in the first round. I hope we can get through that series and, and go on to the next one. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I think uh, Cleveland would win that as well. Uh, so we're going to get into the uh, 3-6 matchup you know, if the playoffs start today. Good old Philly, uh, back in the playoffs for a while. Uh, it's definitely great to see Philly back in the playoffs. Uh, Matt, can you say anything else? Or oh, no, I, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know if you wanted to say anything. You look kind of puzzled. Oh yeah, I was. Or... I was gonna say like um, something about like with what Gio was saying with um, LeBron James being not being able to play every game. Like last year, there were a lot of people who came home from games crying because they saved. Saved um, money for yeah. tickets just mm-hmm. to see LeBron James play, and they didn't get a chance to do it. And that's why I think this that was very smart because he does need rest, but now he's able to get rest and play in all 82 games. And and everyone's happy because they get to see their idol play. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. You guys brought up a great point. And I always remember last season there was a game, there was a, a fan that bought – uh, he was like 400 or so miles away from Memphis, bought like $300 worth of tickets, and then he uh, made, made a poster board saying, he's like, I, I paid paid uh, four, $300, $400 just to watch LeBron sit home and watch TV. You know, to me, that was kind of outrageous, considering, you know, I understand Marcus Saul sat out the game in Cleveland, you know, the two nights before, but, you know, it, it's a Western Conference game. You need to play those games, because they only see you once a year. If you're an Eastern Conference foe, so you need to play those games. I understand that you know you need your stamina, but you know if it was still like it is today, just take take a game off against a lesser team. Um, that that's just my personal take on it. So we're gonna go into you know the the uh, Philly matchup, like like I've always said, you know Philly Milwaukee. That's a huge game, huge series. Everything's gonna go fantastic in that series if it starts today. Got Giannis and Ben Simmons going at it, even though they played two different positions. Uh, Joel and B will be back in that series, probably second or third game, which we will discuss that, um, and we will discuss Boston a little bit more in detail just because of the Kyrie news that happened last week. But uh, Joe, who, who would you have winning that one, Philly or Milwaukee? You know, I'm, you know, I, I know who I would pick, but. Who would you pick? You know, th- this is an interesting series, none- nonetheless. Okay, getting to see Philadelphia at home live, Ben Simmons is a freak, guys. I mean, the, the guy can has handles, he can shoot, he can do it all. And uh, as long as Joel Embiid is healthy, Philadelphia is a dangerous team. It, it would not surprise me if the Philadelphia 76ers went to the NBA Finals this, this season. It would not surprise me. They've got depth. They've got uh, J.J. Redick shooting the ball from the outside. Um, they uh, excellent coach. They've got a good young core. Um, uh, and it, that would, man, what a marquee series to have the Philadelphia 76ers go up against the Greek Freak. And don't forget, uh, is Delhi healthy? I haven't heard a lot of Delhi news this year. Is he healthy? Yeah, he's healthy. He just doesn't get many uh, playing minutes just because of Bloodso being there and – I can't remember the other point guard that they have backing a blood cell right now, but Delhi is getting kind of the bench warmer minutes for Milwaukee right now. Yeah, that that would be a fantastic series. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Milwaukee's going to slip to the seven, but we'll see. But if Philadelphia plays Milwaukee, that is must watch NBA television. You got to watch those games because you're going to see young stars put it out on the floor and, and getting to. See their really first prime time series, man. That would be fantastic if it happens. But if that happens, I got Philadelphia in six games over Milwaukee and getting to the second round. Mackie, what, what's your what's your insight on this? Um, I think um, Philly's going to win it in five. I think Milwaukee because they have the Greek freak. He might they might be able to take one game, but Phillies have all in all a better team and. I really think if they don't win the championship this year, they're definitely going to win it someday because I feel like this is a team that doesn't even reach its prime for another five or six years. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I can agree with you on that. 
I would take Philly in five, six, just because I give I give whoever's playing Philly the uh, first game automatically, just because you know first playoff game without Joel Embiid. Obviously, whenever whenever he's on the court, they're absolutely fantastic. They're like Golden State. And it was funny whenever I was doing our stat sheet today. Philly is top 10 in almost every other category except free throw percentage. 23rd in the league at free throw percentage. But everything else, they're top 10 in. That is absolutely crazy. And, you know, like Gio talked about with them only being young guys, it's unheard of. You know, Brett Brown's doing fantastic with the young core, like he mentioned. And, you know, I'm, I'm with Gio. I wouldn't be surprised if they make it to the finals. I, I, I would I not be surprised. You know, I, I, I'm also kind of rooting for him at this point just because it's, it's a great... It's a great feel good, great feel good story, just like Loyola was in NCAA. It was a great I mean, feel good story. I will always root for my Cavs being a hometown Cleveland boy, but I agree with both of you. I think they have a chance this year. Oh yeah, if you really think about hey, it. Hey, hey fellas, I, I got to ask this question, and, and we're eventually going to get to it anyway. Do you have a prediction where LeBron goes next season, and it's Philadelphia an option? You know, it's funny because I was going to ask you that at the end of the show if we had a time for it, Gio. So you're already alluding to it. But, hey, uh, to me, I don't know why people aren't talking San Antonio. Honestly, going to play with one of the best coaches of all time, Greg Popovich, uh, it's rumored that Kawhi Leonard is going to be on the trading block or teams are going to try to approach San Antonio to get Kawhi because of the fiasco that's happened this season. And it's also rumored that the Cavs want him, too. So if the Cleveland, Cleveland would somehow put up a huge package deal to get Kawhi, just because they have a feeling that LeBron's leaving, I wouldn't be surprised if LeBron goes off and play for Philly or, you know, to me the only real two options are Philly and San Antonio, in my opinion. I I understand the Lakers, you want to play for the for the Gold and Purple and everything else in Houston, but to me LeBron doesn't fit Houston's system very well. I know that he's got the great passing, but he's, he's a little bit older. He doesn't have a... He has a good three ball, but it's not really consistent in my eyes. It's got to be a little bit more consistent to beat that. Uh, Houston's pace. Um, Lakers, he wants to win a championship now, and the Lakers don't really have that chance. I know they have Magic Johnson being there. You know, Lakers legend, everything. They have a ton of cap space so they can offer him a max contract. But with, with, with that in mind, he wants to win now. So he's either going to go to Philly or... San Antonio, because I think they could. I think he could win in San Antonio. I honestly believe that. You know, because he could probably do something that Michael Jordan didn't, just go over to the West and win a championship over there. So that way he can say that he did something that Michael Jordan didn't do, <laughs> is win a championship <laughs> over in the West. And so I think that would be a little bit interesting. So, you know, uh, Mac, you know, to, to do Gio's question, do you think he's staying or do you think that he is leaving? Um, I think he might stay just because his kid wants to play for St. V and Great point, great point. If that's the case, there's a good chance that he might stay in Cleveland. But if he really wants to win bad, I think Philadelphia is his best bet. Yeah. But yeah. I hope I'm wrong, yep. and I hope he doesn't do it. Yeah. Do, do See, yours. I, I, well, I really don't think the West is an option. I don't think he'd want to go out there. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Clay Thompson is with Golden State one more season after this. No. He's a free agent. Yeah. Or is he a free agent after this season? No, he'll be, he'll be next season with Kyrie and a couple other guys. Okay, okay. But I just don't see him going to the West uh, because, um, I, first of all, just the, the television market, he won't be as seen if he's out West. And he, you know, People think that is uh, won't make sense, but playing 10, 30 games all the time, people don't watch him as much. Okay? And I, I just think that the East, first of all, is going to be an easier route to get to NBA Finals. Also, it you know it's his home, and I, I just don't think he's going to pull the trigger. Look at all the negative publicity he got when he went to Miami. And if he goes to Philadelphia, people are going to call him a ring chaser and blah, blah, blah. I think he stays home, and I think we get a couple pieces to help him uh, you know, win more NBA titles. And, and I don't think the outcome of the 2018 season will have anything to do with that. And if, if they get if they get knocked down the second round or if they win the NBA title, I think he's already got his main mind, his mind made up of, of what he wants to do. One so. thing I'm just going to tell you about another reason why I might agree with you is because based on what you said, he's also very very cautious when it comes to his brand and leaving Cleveland will tarnish his brand a little bit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but of course, we're homers. So. 
and we want him to stay. <laughs> so we're going to think of it. We want him to stay, but I mean, I know he left before, so I, I don't yeah. want to get my heart yeah. broken again, but I just want to be yeah. prepared well, for it. Listen, listen, I was one of those crazy dudes who was burning LeBron jerseys in 2010, okay? If he leaves this time, I'm fine. I got my ring. He made my life. And he, he kept his promise, too. He said, yep, I promised yep. one championship. He didn't promise six championships. He promised one. Okay. He did it. And, and, he, and he did it. And, and uh, you know, June uh, 19th, uh, 2016 is one of the greatest days of my life. So I was on my way home from San Francisco, actually, that night. I had to go to a wedding. And I came home and with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter and watched them one. I thought that was really cool. That's, that's pretty okay. cool. I, I got to tell my story. Right. That is Father. That is Father's Day. Also, my son came back from strix, uh, six strokes down and won his first ever golf tournament. And also, guys, that year I didn't watch game five, six, or seven live. I was stuck in my room. I watched Star Wars. I watched zero of the game live. And then my son tells me, comes up and tells me that when we win the NBA title. Now I've watched Game Seven about three hundred times since then. But <laughs> you know, to win it, to win the championship. LeBron, listen, we're going to put statues up for him. We're going to do it all. And I don't care if he leaves. If he wants to leave, that's fine. I mean, he made my sports life by winning that 2016 sport, so. was a good year because now to get off track, I mean, not only them doing it, but then the Indians almost doing it in October. Oh, that was crazy, <laughs> dude. And you guys know about the famous tweet and all that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And that's oh, why yeah, I, yeah. I had to bring that up because I'm like, oh, my God, we were just so close. I mean, yes, it's sad, but yeah. still, that World Series was a classic, and I'll always remember it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I definitely think the Indians have another shot. And also, our Browns are getting better. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah so, so, I don't think they're going to the Super Bowl anytime soon, but no, I do think they're no. on the right track, finally. Yeah, Yeah, finally. Just real quick. Do you guys want Allen or Rosen, and do you want Barkley? i got to hear your prediction on this. Uh, personally, I would take Saquon Barkley. They definitely need the offensive push in with a running back. You know, he just needs to be able to they – need, they need firepower. That's the thing they've been lacking. Uh, quarterback, I, you know, I don't study NFL very much, really, especially college. You know, I just tune in every once in a while whenever we talk about Raiders zone. You know, but the way Josh Allen has looked – uh, I think I think that he'd be a good pick, honestly. But to me, it's just you know I would definitely choose Saquon Barkley. He's definitely a superstar in the NFL. He or at least he will be a superstar in the NFL. But um, you know Saquon Barkley, uh, Saquon Barkley, and uh, Josh Allen for me, uh, Mac. Um, yeah, I'm like you. I don't really follow NCAA football very well, so I'm just gonna watch the draft, listen to the draft, and see what they do in the draft and see how our team's future looks. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, cool. All right, cool. Oh, I'm open for Allen and Barkley. Okay, let's get back to the NBA. Uh, what's your take on the Celtics, guys? Do, do you think they, they – I mean, they're, they've been devastated by injury. Can they get even through the first round? You see, if they face a team like Miami, uh, no. If they face Milwaukee, potentially. But honestly, I don't think they're getting out of the first round. If Kyrie was there, yeah, I'd definitely say they're definitely going to the Eastern Conference Finals. And it's funny, we've talked on the show a lot about Gordon Hayward returning. Uh, it's more, it's funny, it's more of a possibility of Gordon Hayward returning than it is Kawhi Leonard. It's kind of, kind of funny we've been joking around about that a lot here on the show, that Gordon Hayward's more likely to return than Kawhi Leonard. But I also don't see Boston getting out of the first round at all, really, just because... Um, they don't have no. the firepower. They don't, you know, yeah. no, no offense, and Al Horford doesn't do much. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, sh- I, I'm gonna shock you guys. I, I think they do get out of the first round. Brad Stevens is a genius, and he's gonna find a way. And in fact, I have them winning, winning round two, especially if they play against Philadelphia. I think they will make it to the Eastern Conference Final, but once they play the Cavs, I think they're gonna be done. Um, I, I actually don't know about that. If they had a, a healthy Kyrie Irving and a healthy Gordon Hayward, I would definitely agree with you. But, but two of their star players are hurt. But I do think they make it out of the first round because, like you said, Brad Stevens is a genius. He's like a mini Greg Popovich is what he is. I know yep. I know he's a genius. And, Go, sorry, continue. And I think he will make it out of the first round in six or seven games, I think. 
Dwayne Wade's going to try and prove he's not. He has still a little bit of fight left in him, so I think that series will go to six games. But yep. I think Boston will definitely get out of that first round. I don't think they're going to get out of that second round because if they, they'll have to play Philadelphia, Raptors, and a healthy Cavs. I know the Cavs have had their injuries too this year, but I think as long as they have LeBron, they could definitely beat the Celtics without Irving and Hayward. Oh, yeah, definitely. Gio, you want to say something real quick? Or yeah, you want to continue what you were saying before your accident cut you off there? Um, you, you, you know, Boston is just a weird team. I mean, the backcourt of Rozier and Brown, that's pretty dynamite, man. Uh, you, you know, Tatum, uh, Horford, I, I mean, they have a young team that can still shoot the ball and put the ball in the basket. It's really remarkable what they've done without Kyrie. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Then that's the beauty of the NBA playoffs. You, you know, every series is different. Every matchup is different. Um, but I think I think Boston can get through the first round. If they play Philly, I would favor Boston on paper just because of the coaching matchup and all just because of how young the Philadelphia uh, 76ers are. But you never know. I mean, let's say uh, Philly loses to Milwaukee tomorrow and the Cavs get the three seed. And here's a bigger question. Do you, do you think it matters for the Cavs if they play Toronto in the second round or they play Boston? Does it even matter to you? Because um, to me, it doesn't matter. Um, I think you're going to have to play them anyway. Just what's the order? You know. I think um, that it would kind of matter because I do think Toronto will give Cleveland a good ride, and I think that series will go to Game 7 for sure, but... I do think LeBron, through his experience, will pull out Game 7 versus Toronto. I really do. Yeah, I definitely think that Cleveland would do great with either matchup. Honestly, you know, Toronto has to prove that they can beat Cleveland before I can believe them because, you know, LeBron's on there, the king, and they've got Kevin Love. The thing that I've told Mac on this whole Cavs thing that we've talked on every time their defensive statistics are horrendous. You know, most of the time you see them bad defensively throughout you know halfway of the season, and then they turn it on. But this season they've been absolutely horrendous defensively, and they can't rebound the basketball either. Tristan Thompson's looking like you know, eighteen and a half million dollars he's been paid has gone to the garbage for for Cleveland. He's the third worst rim protector in the league, and he's got a career low in rebounding's. It's not a good recipe for success. That's why Larry Nance Jr. is starting over him because he he plays better defense, he protects the rim better, and he's a better rebounder than Thompson. And he's basically paid a fourth of what Thompson makes. And that, yeah. that, that definitely tells you something right there. I think, you know, like Max said, if we put together a deal for Kawhi Leonard, I think Thompson's got to be in that mix. Because you oh, could pot- love, you could potentially yeah, sign Bro- that. Yeah, you could potentially sign Brooke Lopez to a veterans minimum. You know, I, I was surprised that Brooklyn didn't ask for a uh, a buyout. We discussed this before the show. I'm surprised Brooklyn didn't uh, do a buyout with the Lakers and try and get with a playoff team because he would fit well with the Cavs system. You know, LeBron dished him for a corner three. Um, you know, he plays defense. And he's able to do what, what he needs to do. So that's my personal yeah. take on it. Yeah, um, uh, well, one, one real quick thing. I think a key player for the Cavs, and you've seen this in the last two weeks, is Jeff Green. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. He needs to be a good offensive player and good on the defensive end. And also, we need the pipe-smoking J.R. Smith to come through <laughs> and start shooting. If he shoots it, this Cavs team is unbeatable. If he shoots it, but if he goes like one at one for nine and is sitting at the end of the bench, you know, moping, this team does not run the same way. Also, you know, Le- you know LeBron's going to be LeBron. Kevin Love's going to be Kevin Love. There's definitely, no doubt. Definitely. But key players like Corver and Green, how do they play? But ultimately, guys, and I've got to ask you this question. I know we're running out of time. You're going to laugh when I say this. The NBA Finals, the NBA as a league, needs the Cavs versus Golden State. They do not want the Toronto Raptors to play against Golden State. So keep that in mind when you see the referees make calls. I, I, I'm not saying it's fixed. I'm just saying that I, it could be fixed. <laughs> but my, my point is, is they would lose millions if the Toronto Raptors play for the NBA title. And they're <laughs> going to make 
millions if the Cleveland Cavaliers play. I mean, and, and, I, and I'm not saying that every game is fixed, but I'm saying just that key call and the key situation could swing a series, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. But bottom line is I'm picking Cavs in the Eastern Conference Final against the Boston Celtics. That's my two picks for the final uh, Eastern Conference. Okay, you know, back, back to that question that you were talking about. Is, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised either. You know, like you said, millions of dollars. Money kind of does play in a factor that, you know, a lot of people say NBA is rigged. I tend to agree at times, depending on, you know, the game, the situation, and all this other other stuff. But, you know, it, it they would definitely lose out on money. You know, Toronto's not really a marquee team you want to see. They've been the first, you know, they've been the best team in the East, which is good. You know, they've been great for the past four years, but they've never gotten over the LeBron James hump. You know, they could have done it in uh, 2015 there in the Eastern Conference Finals, but uh, they didn't, which was uh, a little bit interesting there. Um, So, yeah, I think, you know, like you said, definitely needs to be in the Finals. Uh, Mac, you got anything to add real quick before we get into our Finals predictions? Because I I got Um, mine already. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think um, in the Eastern Conference Finals, I think you're going to see Cleveland and Philadelphia. I think, like Gio said, um, I want Cleveland to do it, but I think Philadelphia could give us a good run for our money. Especially, um, I hate to be a downer here, but I don't think Tyrone Lue's really the greatest coach. And the Cavs, if they want to beat Philadelphia, which I think they will in the playoffs just because I think LeBron is that kind of guy where he will not let... Philadelphia go to the finals. He's been to the finals seven times in a row. I think he'll go for number eight this year. This might be his last consecutive trips to the finals, depending on what his team is next year. But I think Cavs will go in the East, and I think in the West during conference finals, you're going to have Houston and Golden State. I think that series will go to game seven. However, I do think Golden State will end up doing coming out with that series, because like Gio also said, Houston's really good, but they're, I mean, they're not, they're not a ex- dynasty. Yeah. Because think about it. Chris Paul is their second best player besides James Harden. He's already 31 years old, so he's an older guy, so that team's not going to... They're in their prime right now. Golden, Golden State's still going to be in its prime for another four or five years, so I think... Golden State will come out with that series in Game 7. Cleveland and Golden State in the finals. Fourth year in a row. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to shock both of you. You know, I got you know Cleveland-Philly in the Eastern Conference Finals. But I got Philly winning in seven games. I honestly think the, the Sixers are legit. Um, they're not going to have a solution for Embiid. Let me tell you that right off the bat. They, I don't think anybody in the East really has a solution for Joel Embiid unless it be uh, Toronto. You know, they have a shot with Valanciunas, but he can't defend outside the perimeter when Joel Embiid goes and takes a three-pointer. So I think that's a whole other aspect in them in himself, and that's why I think Philly uh, may, makes a run to the finals this year. That, that's my personal uh, personal opinion. So, you know, we got, we'll, we'll go a couple minutes late here. Uh, so finals, the finals matchups, I got Golden State, Philly, uh, Golden State, and Cleveland for uh, Gio and Mac here. So we'll go to Gio's prediction. Who do you got winning the whole thing, and how in and how many games? Cavs and six, baby. I got Cavs and six. They find a way to do it, and I'm banking on Golden State being lethargic and not being together because of all these injuries that they've had. And the Cavs find a way. The Cavs find a way. Mac. Well, I kind of think Gio made a nice point, except for I think that. Golden State might pull it off because the Cavs have had injuries too, but however, they'll have all their players back for the playoffs. I say the series goes down to seven games, but I don't think LeBron could stop um, Golden State because I think it's also going to come down to not only does Golden State have a better team, Golden State also has a coach that I think is smarter. I don't think... I think if had they kept... Personally, I think if they kept Larry Drew, Cavs might have had a chance. But with Tyrone Lue as their coach, I don't think so. I think that series will go to, down to seven games. Golden State will take it. Well, they still have Larry Drew as a, as a assistant head coach, remind you. But you know, you know, like like, like you said, 
he's not the main coach. You know, he did he did do very well eight and one when, you know, when Tiger was out for those nine games. Uh, me, since I've gone state in Philly, I'm going Golden State in five. Uh, German sweep just because Joel and B is such a huge factor on both sides of the end. Golden State not very good in rebounding, uh, 17th in the league, and then uh, Philly's first in the league in uh, rebounding. His thing is that Golden State just got to foul and get them to the line. The only other, the only people they're able to worry about from the line is JJ Redick and Bellinelli. Other than that, you know, Simmons shoots uh, absolutely horrendous from the line, 56% from the from the free throw line, and Golden State just got more firepower. Uh, the two games that they played, they were very entertaining this year, but you know, Golden State won both of those. I think they could do it again. Yeah, I think they'll be a little bit lethargic, like Gio said, but I think that they find a way to do it. So we got Gio going Cleveland in six, uh, Mac going Golden State in seven, and I got Golden State in five. And that'll uh, wrap it up for today's show. We thank everyone for tuning in today. Uh, Gio, we got, you know, th- thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. Hopefully we can uh, do it again, hopefully maybe next week or in the time coming whenever playoffs really get going, we can get your feedback on some of the series that have happened so far. I think this is going to be a very interesting playoff ride. I think it's going to be uh, huge. I think playoffs are going to be great. And I think that you, know, you might as well stop in here on the stop in here in the studio and, and get in here with us sometime maybe. Yeah, that would be outstanding. And listen, Mac, Alex, thanks for having me on the show. You guys need to do me a big favor. You got one week to do it. I need you to go to Doug's Classic and order the Dagwood. Get it cut in half, and I want to see both of you guys finish half that sandwich. It's a monster, man. All right, I'll I'll see what I can do. (laughs) Hey, there are no promises, but hey, I'll see what I can do. So, Gio, thanks for coming on again. We really appreciate it. For yep. myself, Alex Albergasso, for Matt Gilbert, we thank you all for tuning in. Uh, next week, you know, we're just going to be discussing playoff series and major headlines. I think that's what we're going to do for the rest of that. So, for us, again, we thank you again for tuning in tonight. Have a great night, everyone. And, uh, go Mount Union, yeah, Purple and Raiders. Go Raiders, definitely. Go hey, Raiders, hey, guys. Hey, go Cavs, but more importantly, go Raiders, baby. Definitely. Okay, good night, everyone. All right, all right thank you. All right, bye. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council.